Hey, alright, what's up guys? So, um, I finally got OBS to work, so now you can see my face while we're doing this, which is pretty cool. So today, we're going to actually get into the next thing of the BP series, which is level shifters. Uh, but before we do that, I want to make sure that you're all caught up. So, um, from the previous videos, what we had learned was how to make a tree, how to pack it, how to turn it into a crease pattern, and then fold it. So I got a, I got a great example of that from uh, my friend who goes by Shokoladen Pudding Man in the Discord server. So he actually made this skeleton hand. So uh, as you can tell, he started off with the tree, which for a skeleton is not too difficult since everything's kind of kind of like a stick already. So he made the tree, then he packed it. So here's his packing. Uh, and as you can tell, I don't know the name of this bone, but it comes out of the middle, which is pretty clever. And I think that's right here. So he packs it and then he turns it into a crease pattern and then folds it in Orihime. And then, and then he folds it in real life and it turns out great. So this is a great example of uh, what we should be able to do by now. We should be able to, you know, make trees, pack them, turn them into crease patterns, and then fold them. And so if you don't know how to do that yet, I recommend you watch the previous videos or ask some questions or something to make sure you get that down first. And I encourage you to try it out first, like Chocolate and Pudding Man, and, uh, and make a design. And then come back and learn how to do level shifters. So level shifters, there's a lot of things to learn about them. It might take us a few videos to get there. So th this video, we're just going to start and talk about like the basic background information, what they are, why we need them, etc., etc. So let's first talk about why do we need level shifters. So without level shifters, our designs end up kind of, you know, like like a skeleton. It ends up kind of they're stick figures basically, right? And which for a skeleton, it looks great. So it's an awesome design here. And also, by the way, if you can just keep, if you can keep track of a complex tree, you probably know everything you need to make like a full-on skeleton. So if you want to give that a try, it's not actually as hard as it looks if you know how to do packing. But the point is, it's hard to make like really thick figures like with wide faces and stuff like that without level shifters. So for example, like if you wanted to make an insect or a human figure or something like that, that's not just, you know, a stick figure, you're going to need level shifters or other techniques. So for example, um, I've got this stone golem here, which is, it is box pleated. It is axial box pleated, but you, you can't really tell. You don't really see the stick figure behind it. And it doesn't look like a stick figure. It looks like, you know, a bunch of rocks. It's got these large 3D shapes. And the way you get that is with level shifters. And you see like these heart shaped structures and then these diamond structures. Um, you'll see those a lot. And so this is where we're going. Our end goal is to be able to use level shifters and what used to be, you know, a stick figure packing, you know, with just like arm, head, body, legs. And we turn it into this thing with something like this with, you know, lots of 3D details and, and wider, widened parts, thinned parts. Um, that's what we're going for. And so there's a lot of complex things with level shifters. And before we jump right into it, we need some vocab so that we know what we're talking about. And, you know, these, some of these words are some of the most nerdiest things that you'll find in origami. These four on the left, these four are adjectives that describe a crease pattern. So you would take a crease pattern and you say, this crease pattern or this design is axial box plating. Or this one is unaxial box plating. Or maybe you would say like, okay, this region is uniaxial, and this region is unaxial, something like that. And then these words on the right side refer to creases. So you would say, okay, this crease is axial crease, this crease is axial plus one, this crease is axial plus two. You can also do axial plus like one and a half or something like that, which is less common, but it's still a thing. So don't make the mistake. Don't say unaxial crease or axial plus one crease pattern. Does that make sense? So these left ones are describe a crease pattern. These right ones describe a crease. So to start by explaining these left ones, I actually made a, a diagram here to kind of demonstrate it. So this blue bubble is everything that is referred to as box pleating. So box pleating just means that the crease patterns are at 90 and 45 degree angles. So that could be anything as long as it's 90 and 45 degree angles. So that includes things like um, tessellations, Tilted grid even, which, um, you know, we'll get there when we get there, but I'll make the argument why it's box pleating. And also a lot of the 3D stuff. So like, for example, Robert Lang's Black Force Cuckoo Clock or Mooser's Train, which is the first recorded box pleating model, or Robert Lang's Organist. Those things, the reason why they're considered box pleating is because the creases lie at 90 degrees and 45 degree angles. They don't, they don't have trees, they don't have packings, no, um, they don't even lie flat sometimes but because they have 45 to 90 degree angles, they're box pleating. So that's everything in this blue bubble. 
But within this blue bubble, we have this yellow bubble called axial box pleating. The axial box pleating is something very special. In this bubble, here's where we have our, our trees, our packings, basically everything we've learned so far. And this axial box pleating is where we'll learn level shifters. I mean, yeah, Tilted Grid has some level shifters and stuff, but we'll get there when we get there. And then uh, within this bubble, um, the debate came about between the difference between uniaxial box pleating, multiaxial box pleating, even things like cross axial and other things make it a whole mess. We don't need to worry about that yet. For now, um, you can just assume it's uniaxial box pleating. You can assume that uniaxial, by the way, means that there's one axis. Unaxial means there is no axis. So don't get confused, the spellings look the same. But um, uniaxial means that there's one axis. And for most of the things we're going to be doing, there's going to be only one axis. You don't need to worry about that. And even if it actually is multiaxial, you can actually think of it as only one. And I'll explain what that means later, but basically, don't worry about it. It's uniaxial. So the name axial comes from the word axis. So it means in this crease pattern, in this model, there is an axis. Okay, so the properties of axial box cleaning. One, there is at least one axis. So, you know, you could argue that there's more than one in the certain models, but you need at least one. And then the second condition is that all the hinges are perpendicular to the axis on the folded form. But we still don't know what an axis is. So let me be very clear right now. An axis is not a crease and it's not the line of symmetry. It might lie on the line of symmetry and there might be a crease on the axis, but it is not the, a crease itself. You cannot say, okay, this crease is my axis. You know, right? Does that make sense? You can have axial creases, but the axis is just like, it's an imaginary line basically. Okay, so here's Orihime, and I, this is the crease pattern that we were working with last time. So this, this arbitrary tree, and I'm, we're gonna to try to identify what is the axis here. So if you've ever taken a physics class, you may have been taught that you can define your x and y axis however you want. You could say x is this way, and y is this way, and negative is up and positive is down. And as long as you keep it consistent throughout the whole problem, you'll, the math will work itself out. And I would argue that you could do the same here. You could put your axis wherever you want. And as long as you keep it consistent throughout the whole design process, everything will work out okay for you. Now, with that being said, there are some conventions. And like in the physics conventions, we usually say that this is negative and this is positive. And so in the same way, we have some conventions that we usually follow in origami. But if you don't do it, it doesn't necessarily mean your design is wrong. So some of these conventions for defining the axis is um, the line on which all of the valleys are collinear, which also often happens to be where th the edges are collinear. So I would say um, this line here, uh, it would be a pretty good axis. Most people would call this their axis, okay? And that means that all of the creases that are collinear with the axis on this final form which happen to be all the valleys because you can see they're blue in the edges, those are axial creases. So I would say like this crease here would be an axial crease because when I fold it up, it lies on the axis. And then we come to the hinges. So these are the hinges here, you see here, and then they end up vertical. So these vertical lines here, these are the hinges. And as you can tell, they're vertical, which is perpendicular to the, the horizontal line here. So our condition is met all the hinges are perpendicular to the axis. So, so this is an axial box theta model, and we have our axial creases. Now what about the mountain here? So to describe the mountains, that's when we need our axial plus one vocab. So when you hear axial plus one, axial plus two, that is referring to elevation. So basically how far above the axis you are. So these red, these mountains, they're one unit above the axis. So these creases we would refer to as axial plus one. So I say, okay, this mountain is an axial plus one crease. And then the other creases that we have, so we talked about hinges, these are axial, these valleys are axial, these mountains are axial plus one, and then there's hinges, and then there's these diagonal creases, which are called ridges. So ridges are diagonal, they are the transition from axial plus axial to axial plus one, or something like that. So we have three types of creases. We have hinges, ridges, and then the axial or axial plus one or axial plus two creases. And in axial box pleating, almost every crease can be classified into one of those three categories. That's another property. Now, of course, there are some exceptions. 
And when we make level shifters, we'll have some exceptions that can be debated and whatnot. But that's the general idea. You might be confused, so let me just show you that again, but with the physical model. So the problem with OBS that is that you know you can see my face, but also this camera is very very pixelated or so. But I think you can see it well enough, so I think we're not going to have a problem. The yeah, here's the base we had last time. So axial, remember axial was referring to all the creases on this like that on the lower elevation. So like these all these valleys that end up down here, like this line here, that would be an axial crease. And then these lines on top, these would be axial plus one creases because they're one unit above. They're like a little bit taller, right? And then the hinges, you see, remember these are the hinges and you can tell they're perpendicular to the axis. So therefore we know that this base is an axial box pleating. And we only have one axis, so it's uniaxial. And then these are, you know, and then these diagonal are the ridges again. Now to show you a few more examples. So this is what we get when we do level shifters. So in this other example, we only had axial and axial plus one. Here we got here's our axial, right? So I'm just gonna call this the edge here, or so like this lower lowest level. This is the axial, so the lowest elevation. And then here's one unit above. So these creases on top are axial plus one. And then you go up a ridge, and then these creases are axial plus two. And then these creases are actually axial plus four. And the, what the level shifter does is it transitions from axial plus two to axial plus four, or transitions from axial plus one to axial plus two. So you could call this, I don't know if there's an official name, but this would be like a plus one transition because it goes from two to one. And then this one would be a plus two transition which goes from two to four. And again, we'll learn, we'll look back at these, you know, this plus two happens to be the heart shape I mentioned earlier. These plus ones happen to be the diamond shapes I mentioned earlier, but we'll learn those again later. So this is what we're gonna be doing in the future videos. We're gonna learn how does exactly does this work. And hopefully by the end of the videos, you'll, you'll be able to understand exactly what's going on in this thing. Anyways, um, I think that's about it for this video. It was a lot of technical stuff and, you know, nerdy origami talk. But I promise you in the next few videos, we're going to actually get in. We're going to learn how to actually design stuff and fold stuff and make our models 3D and round and not stick figures. All right. No homework for, in this class, except for maybe to review the vocab if you're not sure about them or ask questions if you don't quite get what's going on. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new OBS, whether I should you know, continue showing my face or I should go back to the old way with uh, a not blurry camera. Both. Stay tuned for the next video. We got a lot in store. Make sure to subscribe to be notified when the next videos come out. And with that, I'll see you next time.